Today on Between the Lines, uplift your spirits and transform yourself with my guests, one of America's most beloved songwriters and performers, Paul Williams, and his co-author, the clever writer and director, Tracy Jackson. Welcome, I'm Barry Kibrick. Tracy wrote the film Confessions of a Shopaholic, and Paul has won an Oscar, Grammy, and Golden Globe for such hits as The Muppets' Rainbow Connection, We've Only Just Begun, and his Academy Award-winning song, From a Star is Born. Tracy and Paul have been friends for years, and she has been with him through his difficult times of addiction, and their friendship continues through Paul's over 20 years of sobriety. With their book, Gratitude and Trust, they give us an inspirational guide to uncover our most productive and healthiest selves. I'm a writer today because I was a reader when I was 11 years old, and it was... You do, need, need, you do not need to prove your state of happiness to anybody. Most of these speeches were as much as a month in preparation. The characters, the heroes in this book are seekers of truth in, in a story that, that involves a lot of corruption. You don't get a chance to really talk about what's real. And that is the first thing to do. Tracy, Paul, this is a true honor and pleasure to have you on Between the Lines, both of you. I'm so glad you could make it. Well, we're very happy to be here. We were both been looking forward to this, Barry. Well, it's my pleasure. And I, I want to begin, Paul, with your words, because you, the, the book is called Gratitude and Trust, and the subheading is Six Affirmations That Will Change Your Life. And Paul, right off the top, you say, writing the affirmation was simple, but achieving it has taken much more time, effort, and discipline. And you also warn us that people sometimes have trouble with the word even, affirmation. I think it's, it's some people go, oh, it's that woo-woo world again and all. But the fact is that the six affirmations are really simple statements of purpose, you know, uh, to, to, to affirm. And the, for example, the very first affirmation, something needs to change and it's probably me. It's an empowering moment because you're recognizing that you're standing at a pinnacle of change and all. I'm 24 years sober. The, the title, incidentally, Gratitude and Trust, is about, it's based on the way I've lived my life for the last 24 years. Uh, this, this has been a, a remarkable experience, sitting down with this writing warrior for the light and creating this simple plan to put your life shiny side up. And Tracy, you know, it's funny because I knew someone that did, was, was in recovery, but not because they needed it. I know this sounds funny. Uh, they had a reason by the law that they had to go. And they said to me, boy, you know, I wish this was available to people who really don't even have, quote, unquote, an addiction. That's the first words I read out of you was that was almost your reason for getting involved was you saw the beauty of the recovery program and realized, my gosh, you, even if you have a, another type of addiction, that's one thing, but you don't even need to have an addiction to benefit by these words of wisdom. No, I think, I've, I, A, I've always said I had recovery envy, Barry, because I've always <laughs> looked at people who had recovery as a gift, you know, I mean, not what it takes people to get there because it's harrowing and, and they go through really, really deep, deep, deep problems, as we all know. But there's something in the recovery movement that I find so exhilarating and so astonishing and so life affirming. And I was just always envious that people had this. And why didn't the rest of us? And I used to say, I just think everybody should be required to go through recovery like people who have to go to driver's ed to get a driver's license. It's, it's just a great blueprint to get through life and be a better person. I, it's always felt that way to me. So writing this book has been a gift because not only have we gotten to give it to the world, but in using it every day, it's changed my life. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? Just for the, for the viewers right now, they'll see, I'm gonna put up the six affirmations. So they'll be up there, uh, and, uh, but we'll discuss them throughout the show, not necessarily in, well, actually, we'll even discuss them in order, but I want them to see what they are, and I wanna read them real quickly. One, as Paul said before, something needs to change, and it's probably me. Two, I don't know how to do this, but something inside me does. 
I will learn from my mistakes and not defend them. I will make the wrongs I've done whenever possible right. I will continue to examine my behavior on a daily basis, and I will live my life in love, service, gratitude, and trust. And as I said, we're gonna go into each one of these steps, but this line caught my attention. We set these goals as you, and again, I remember this is up for grabs, and we cross our fingers that we can achieve them, but mostly all we want to live our lives unburdened by anger, resentment, and bad habits. And if I just say that, I feel an affirmation because that's the hardest thing for you anyone to do. You feel the power of the statement. You feel the power of your own intention. And there's something, you know, I get very Jiminy Cricket about this entire thing, Barry. I think there's something, you know, at 49, somebody who had been, been just fried for 10 years and so disconnected from the rest of the world, when I entered into the world of recovery, all of a sudden I'm surrounded by the, this, these fellows that are so ethical and loving and leaning forward in, a, in, a, in a, 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 an attitude, a stature of service. And I, you know, I, I saw something in their eyes and I felt something from them I'd never experienced before. Just a comfort level with who they were. You know, and, and it's very loving. Some of them were not totally comfortable about it. Some of them were like sort of, this is awkward, but how can I help you? There was something about it that I saw in them though and immediately was this sort of a place of, this is, this is larger than me and I can share it with the rest of the world. To have that sense of, of, of comfort, living in, in love and service, is, is the safest place in the world for me. I also think that when you, when you mentioned the part about the anger and resentment, that so many people, so many of our problems, Barry, come from our past. You, know, it, you really very seldom hear someone say, you know, at the age of 45, you know, someone offended me last week and now I'm, you know, and I go, and I'm enraged and I go back to it and this is the, the headwaters of my discontent. We all have problems from our childhoods. Everyone, everyone has issues that they've held on to for life, rage, unhappiness in lesser and, and degrees, some in larger degrees. When you're allowed to get, let go of those, you know, through this work, when you're allowed to make right your wrongs, when you're allowed to really face your past, when you're allowed to own your mistakes and own that the problems are yours, there's something in that that just is remarkable. And, and unlike the drunk or the addict who has to face that they're drunk or addicted, which, you know, the problem is there, it's right in your face. You have to dig a little bit deeper in these. But there is just something so, you know, in the way you said you felt better, it's very freeing. Because, you know, if it's even road rage, if whatever it is, whatever your problem happens to be, there's something in there that's bubbling. But you know, it's sometimes, oh, Paul, go ahead. I was ahead. just going to say that, but it's actually something that's, that's visible. As you began to talk about the way it felt, I saw your face change. I saw this, this uh, kind of a, a tranquility. And yeah. it's a really pretty thing to see. No, and, and, and you feel it as, as, it's, as it's being done. But, but here's the part that I found so interesting is that when you, and I think Tracy Hint said it, when you have an addiction or a specific thing, even if you go to a psychiatrist and you know it's because you were an abused child, that's an almost, I hate to say it, an easier problem yeah. to fix because it has a label already. It's when you don't have something to identify with, that's as, as you say, how do we even identify what the it is we need to change? That for me, I know, is sometimes the hardest thing. And people we, can find them. You know, very, I mean, people write in all the time, you know, how do you do it? How do you find that problem? Everyone knows that they're, they may not know what it is, but they know they're unhappy. And if you force people to sit down and really write down, in, in almost, and this we're big advocates of the written word, writing down what's working in your life, What's not working in your life? What did you want? Where are you now? Is it where you want to be? If you start just list after list after list, if you need it, it starts to make itself clear. It's, it's not that hard to find. You have to dig. And most people, what we tend to do in this country is we push away our problems. You know? we're, we're big on, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, we're all fine, except then you find out somebody wasn't so fine, you went, but we thought they were fine. Yeah. We all put this facade up of everything's okay because that's what's expected of us. And really, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. That, that's the thing, you know, having a problem, and that comes from recovery too. They own their problems and they're not ridiculed for them. We tend to shame people. Oh, that's the biggest thing. How do you avoid 
that shame. Isn't that, the, isn't that the key? Because when we blame ourselves or take responsibility, what you emphasize here over and over again is don't be shamed by that. Let that be an, a, an awakening. Well, what you're doing here is, is, is helping to reduce the stigma. The interesting thing about, about being identified as an alcoholic or an addict is that you, you say this is somebody who has identified that they have a problem with drugs and alcohol and they abstain. But that's where the work begins. What, what Tracy is talking about and, and the, 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 this state of, of sobriety, of a, abstinence and sobriety are very different. Recovery comes after, you know, we put the plug in the jug. We put away the cocaine, we stop self-medicating, and that's where the real work begins. And I will tell you that I was probably five years sober before I looked at my childhood and I went, oh my God, you had a terrible childhood. It's like Dickensian. My dad was killed in a wreck when I was 13. My mother shipped me off to live with an aunt and uncle I had never met, I, so I lost my entire family. But if you'd seen me as a kid in high school, I was fine. I was Tracy's version of, uh, it's just, I was fine. I, I acted like an alcoholic long before I drank like one. The oh, real work. That's, oh, c go further in that, Paul, because that's just, I've never heard it expressed it's that, that way. Part, it's that part of you that feels like there's something missing, so a, a book of instructions that, that I never had and everybody kind of knows some stuff that I don't know. So the, the result is that instead of going, if somebody says, do you know how to do something? Instead of going, no, I'd love to learn which is an elegant statement of, 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 of you know, I'm, I'm ready, let me grow. Let me, it's, it's perfect that I'm short, let me grow. <laughs> but the fact is that, that I was, you know, if, if you, to this very day, if Tracy asked me, do you, you, know, you know who Jeff Findelberg is, don't you? My head is going like this because she said, knows about Jeff Findelberg, and this is somebody I'm supposed to know about. So my head is going up and down and I say, no, who's yeah. Jeff Stinnelman? No, it's just, <laughs> it's something, some little piece of, of something inside me that, that just has that little wrestling match with, I'm supposed to know something. It's okay, Paul, you don't know who that is. You're about to learn. Enjoy the process. We all want to be accepted, you know? We all want to be accepted for who we are. Yet we're often really reluctant to tell other people who we really are. So people walk around feeling like they're not seen. And I'm always telling this to my kids, you know, how am I going to know you if you don't tell me who you are? And so by hiding so much inside, all it does is just stay locked in and cause us such health problems, psychological problems. These, you know, it, it, it just, it eats up at us. You know, I, I call it, you know, we're emotional Sherpas. We're dragging around all this stuff and it weighs us down. Well, you say these are the, the oh, we haven't even touched on the, on the affirmations yet. Hope we'll, oh, we'll get there, I promise. But you say that honesty, purity, unselfishness, and love. Well, honesty, that's what you're talking about right now. That's the, the keystone. It starts with that being honest. Absolutely. Dare to be yourself. Dare to look at the things that you don't know how to do and share that with the people that can teach you. Take a look at the, you know, the, my favorite of the affirmations is the third. I will learn from my mistakes and not defend them. Lord God, I have spent, I spent 49 years lying through my teeth about what I was doing, trying to hide because I thought if anybody saw who I really was at that point in time, my life was going to be over. My life began when I owned the mistakes. You answered the first one, which is identifying the problem and that problem is probably me. Yeah. You just mentioned the third one. I want to though talk about that second one because that's the one that's sometimes the hardest for us to do and that is I don't know how to do this but something inside of me does. And you're very careful because you know that some people are turned off by as you just said that higher power yeah. or that what and yet you know how important that is and it's a I, I even find it one of the hardest balances on because it seems to sometimes come on an intellectual level, sometimes on an emotional level, and sometimes those two levels are in conflict. Yeah. Totally. Well, I, well, you know, it's, I would have to say it's the most common problem that we get people voicing on the road. When people will t you know, speak up and say, I get this, I get this, I get this. I can do the gratitude even, but I have a really hard time with the faith. And, and faith is one of those things, if you're not if you haven't been raised in it, if it doesn't come naturally, if you're someone who doesn't believe because you don't want to believe, and we're completely neutral, we don't care, and you know, you've read the book, you know, we don't care what you believe in. We, you know, we, I like to say I believe in belief, and, and my beliefs are very convoluted and completely my own, and they don't set with any one ideology. 
but if you can just have faith, and, and it's hard to have faith because what do you have faith in unless you really have, you know, have something that's completely set out for you, a path that you're following by an organized religion or something. And that's the thing because you're, you're having faith in something that doesn't exist as far as you know. You're having faith that your future is going to work out. You're having faith that this is the right place for you to be. You're having faith that this actually, this setback is in your best interest. There's so many ways to say, I don't know how to do this, but something inside me does. This moment isn't forever. And if you can have the faith that you can get through whatever it is, or you have the faith that you can make something happen. It's just letting go and, and holding on to something outside of you and inside of you at the same time. You know, and that's where I think you talk about that high wire, you know, the high wire act. It's inside, it's, it's here, it's here. Sometimes they converge. Sometimes it has to be purely intellectual because you just can't quite emotionally grasp it. Sometimes you just sit really quietly in your backyard and, and you're maybe having a glass of wine and you're just sitting or, you know, reading. And, and I mean, I'm sure when you read, sometimes you just all of a sudden, you know, it's when you release. That feeling when you just release and it gets you through. It just gets you through the worst and it lets you know that the best is there. And, and it's very powerful. You know, I even had on two of the most famous atheists in the world, Richard Dawkins yes. and Sam Harris. And in Sam Harris, I had on for a book he wrote on spirituality. And what he even was able to hold on to, you mentioned in the book, it could even simply be the collective consciousness. Mm. And, 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 and so if an atheist can actually state that, then we know that we can find that inner thing, and you call it best, an ally. That's what the we're looking ally. for, the inner Ally. And the power, as you know, Tracy points out, there's immense power in belief. When I was drinking and using, I would be, uh, I've run out of cocaine. I'm, I've, I'm falling apart. I'm craving the horrible cravings that I'm calling the dealer. The dealer's not there. There's something I observed after I got sober. That I'd be calling the dealer and I'd be angry like that. And then she would answer the phone, hello. And I could tell by the way she answered the phone that she had something for me. And I felt better. Now, I haven't used anything yet, but I feel better. Why? You know, this stuff is delivered, I begin, to do it. the process starts again, it's craziness, it's insane, it's not working. But for that brief period of time before I ingested anything, I was totally all right. What was I experiencing? I was experiencing the absolute power of faith, the power of belief. I was in, in, in poison, in the wrong thing, but the power was not in the, the, the substance. Perhaps the power is just in the, in the comfort of knowing that there is something there for you. I, I believe that a, a proper state of mind to go forward that is really positive is an amazing tool, an amazing tool. And one of those amazing tools that you shed here is also number four. We're gonna try to plow through all six, but that is that you, know, you wanna make the wrongs right. And, and two things caught my eye was, one, nothing weighs more than guilt, and the other, you cannot fix anything by blaming, judging, or criticizing. Because if I'm correct, that's the first thing virtually all of us do when we're in that moment is blame, judge, and criticize. There's this magical moment right before sleep, right between wake and sleep for me, that's like a mail slot. And it's like where every now and then the big amigo will deliver a little bit of mail to me in the form of a memory, something you've forgotten that I did. And I will go, oh, or to, you go immediately to wake and you go, oh my God, I did that. You are, in, you are such a horrible little man. You need to fix that right away. Well, I'm not a horrible little man. I'm somebody who made mistakes when he was drinking and using. I make mistakes in life today. I pick up the phone the next day and I deal with it. It relieves me of the baggage that she's talking about. It gives me that, and just knowing that, that this is something that I can do and knowing how it feels when you do it, it becomes an immediate gift. Because, it's a habit, it becomes yeah, a habit. Yeah. The other thing is, and, and, it, and I think it's really an important thing for people to understand, is just because you apologize to someone or just because you own your side of a situation or clean up your side of the street, it doesn't mean the other person's going to follow suit. And it doesn't mean they're, I mean, I, something happened an hour before I came here when I had a situation this week that got way out of hand and, and, you know, things were said. And I just emailed, you know, I'm really sorry for my part in this. I don't, you know, and I cleaned up my side of the street. The other person responded in a really kind of curt way. It didn't matter. Their response was irrelevant to me because I knew I was right. You know, I, not right because I don't want to say right and wrong. I had done what I had to do. 
I had taken my, taken responsibility for my slide, and I had no guilt. As opposed to walking around, you know, if I hadn't said that, do you think things might have been different if I hadn't done... You know, we all walk around with these kind of fantasy conversations of our head. Have I done this? Have I done that? If you just... And we all know, it goes back to in here. We know in here what's right. You know, we all have that still small voice within. And we know when we've hurt someone's feelings, or we might have acted on our own behalf and not someone else's. We know when we could have done better, or we might... And if you just go back to that place and go, hey, Barry, you know, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings last week, or I'm sorry if I was curt, I was thinking, whatever it may be. It's so freeing. It's just the most freeing thing in the entire world. And you just go forth and you know you're okay. You've done your bit. I've never found a chemical that matches the elegance of kindness for just a feeling of pure joy. Oh, you know, that's going to then lead me I have to go to the next one. I'm, I'm not going to skip. I'm not going to skip five. I'm going to mention it. It's I will continue to examine my behavior on a daily basis. But we did yes. get into Part that. So we've already we talked about. Part okay. Of that. So I want to get into six, which is I will live my life in love, service, gratitude, and trust. And Paul, you mentioned feeling good is that gateway to gratitude. Yes. And in recovery, we say you get to keep the miracle by giving it away. There is, there is something so wonderfully empowering about having that sense that you've found something really worthwhile and you already are in a place where you can, there's always somebody coming up with less time than you. There's somebody, in, I mean, if you could imagine the, the, the relationships that Tracy has with some hardcore alcoholics at this point online. I mean, I'm going to make her an, an honorary drunk. I cannot believe the people that she's working with. And I know that, I know that she is empowered and uh, you know, she's not doing it for that, but I know that the fact that she's able to share what she knows with the, with the, the people she's working with, I, I, know it, I know it empowers her. I know it energizes her. Well, I, will, I don't think there's anything and I think it's in different stages in your life. You know, I, I think that you get to a place in your life where giving back is more important than taking in. You know, um, and if you've had a good career and you've lived and you've done a lot of things you've wanted to do, and then you get to this place where you're able to just really sort of live your, you know, live your days in service. And people even say to me now, they go, you know, don't you miss screenwriting? Don't you miss that glamour? Don't you? And I just, not for a second. I wouldn't, I mean, just the letters that come through every day from people that say, you know, this changed my life, this is changing my life, this is helping me, this got me. What's more, what can, what can be better than that? And the essence of, of what we're doing is, I think, in those two words, love and service. If, if you're living your life in love and service, the, perhaps the reward of, for that is pure gratitude for what has happened so far and trust for the future. Well. Guys, I, what I really want to do is, because this is the rare time, I know that when people see something like this, they're not going to want to just stop. A, I know they're going to want to get the book, but B, I know they're going to want to go to your organization. I'm going to give it out right now, your website, if, if you guys don't mind. Yeah. It is www, it's, it's too easy almost, www.gratitudeandtrust.com. Calm. We'll leave that up for a, a second or so, make sure everyone gets a chance to see it. But I want to go to this one point, and I know we're out of time, but I'm still going to go to this point, and I'll just take something out from, from before. Just because the past is littered with discontent does not mean the future has to be. That's when I see the people I love the most struggling the most is when they think that Everything that happened before that wasn't going right doesn't mean that what's about to come won't go right. That to me is one of the most important things. If we can get that into our cellular structure, yes. we will be way ahead of the game. We all have the power to change. You just have to have the faith and the willingness to, to do it and the discipline and vigilance to, to wake up every day. And you know, that's why the, even the one uh, the, the affirmation of I will uh, examine my behavior on a daily basis, right? I mean, yeah, that sure. that comes in as, did I do well today? Or maybe there were some places there. I'll do better tomorrow. And there is amazing information in the mistakes that I've made. There is a, there is a, a map to a, a much better future. If I'm willing to make those mistakes, my, my schoolroom 
make make the place where I can look at where I've gone. This is where I turned turned off the path, and it's led me. It's it, it, no has been a navigational nudge that moved me in the direction of where I need to be. Become an activist in your own future. Take a look at where you've been. Move forward in gratitude and trust. Well, Paul, I'm going to actually end on those words. Our time is up. Gratitude and trust stand on their own. They are the essence of a well life lived. Thank you guys for joining us and for sharing your gratitude and trust that you've experienced. Thank you, Barry, very Good much for having thank us. You it's a great experience. Well. Oh, it's my Treat. pleasure. And thank you guys for joining us. Now, before Paul and Tracy leave, I'd like to leave you with these few more words from gratitude and trust. It is important to remember we are not our errors, our blunders, or our misdeeds. It only causes us to feel more shame and embarrassment, which usually assures us we will continue to perpetuate whatever we are doing that we want and need to stop. I'm Barry Kibrick. Between all our errors and blunders, remember they are not what define us, but with a little gratitude and trust, the definition of who we are will shine through. Paul, Tracy, just such a pleasure. Thank you both oh, Gary, so thank very you so much. much. My honor pleasure. to be on the show. Fantastic, wonderful. My thank pleasure. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to hear more, please subscribe or become a patron of the show at barrykibrick.com to keep it going every week. Thank you.